Hey everybody, it's Dr. Dickinson, and today I'm going to be talking about math games. As a math teacher, math games were one of my students' favorite things to do. But if you're teaching remotely right now, you might be wondering, how do I build math games into my classroom, and why should I be doing that right now? Well, math games are super important for students to build computational fluency. So you're teaching strategies like an array, and you're wondering how students can get really efficient with that, um, and math games can help your students. So whatever strategy you're, they're working on, play a math game, it will help students become more fluent and more efficient in that specific strategy. Math games also really encourage math talk, which is super important because when the more we talk about something, the more confident we become. And it can help your kiddos when you're giving them an assessment or you ask them an open-ended question and you want them to explain their thinking and there's silence. Okay, that's an indicator. It's time to play some math games. Um, students can also gain familiarity with benchmark fractions or benchmark numbers, and that will support them in identifying patterns and becoming more efficient. Um, and it's just a wonderful way for kids to collaborate and have that low stakes way of doing the math. And of course, your students probably love to hang out and, and chat with their, with their peers and math games is a great way to do that. So they can still be working on math tasks and they can still be doing the math in a gamified way. Um, my son's teachers always sent home math games as homework, and I love that because as a parent, I get to see how my students, how my children are thinking about math, how they approach problem solving, and then there's never that fight of like doing the math. It's always like, okay, let's hang out and engage and play a game together. So I'm going to be showing you all how you can bring math games into your classroom remotely. Or maybe you just want to make a video like this and explain to parents at home how to play a math game. Now, if you're looking at my screen, you're probably wondering, what are we playing? This is a game I've created. It's a very familiar game. Um, it's about making an array. And what I did was I just took a screenshot of this PDF. So most of my games are in a PDF, which can make it hard to gamify. But with using things like Google Slides, you can easily gamify any PDF. So what you're gonna do is first change the page setup. Notice this is like an eight and a half by 11, like something that you print, and that's typically not how the presentations look. So go to file and then change your page setup. I chose eight by 11, which is how pages print. So if you even wanted to print this and send it home, you could and just apply it. It also allows my students more space to, to play the game. Notice that this, the, the image of the game board is on my slide. And then I use the outside of the Google slide to give directions, to add these cute emojis. I also created a table here on the right-hand side so that students can record their scores. I embedded an app to a digital dice. So if your students don't have access to dice, if you can't give them to them, um, you can always include a link to a digital dice board. And they just click on it and it shows how many dice you want and they can roll it. So now that they have their game board, you've included it, it's a PDF image, you've changed the page setting so it's paper. What you can do is play the game. Now my students are gonna roll the dice with this dice app and I'll just roll it here. And I got four by four. So I'm gonna make a array that is four rows and four columns. What I do is real quickly, I go to the insert and then I create a text box and it's gonna be four by four. So four across and four down. And now that that's highlight there, I will go to the paint fill color and pick my color and there it is. I've made my four by four array. You can ask your students to, to record their multiplication equation inside their array, or they can also include it here on their score sheet. So that's one quick and easy way that you can gamify with the PDF. Here's some other examples. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. 
And you also receive uh, this version of this slide deck if you want to use this with your kiddos. This is for creating um, fractions. So notice that I've included all of the benchmark fractions on my game board. Students are going to roll the dice and they're going to, again, create that, um, use the insert text tool. And then they're going to color in their text box to make another bar model and record their fraction. And the object of this game is to see how many of the fractions you can fill up and be the person who has the most fraction fill up. This is a fun game, um, Race to 120. This is for my K2 kiddos. I've included these cute little clip arts so they can be our game pieces here. And again, they can use the digital dice to roll or um, I can have my students use dice that they have at home and they can roll the dice depending on the grade level of my students. So if I'm working with TK, I might just use one die and have them move and count on. So I rolled a five and I will move my icon here. And then if they land on one of these um, colorful icons like the leprechaun hat, they lose a turn. If they land on the pot of gold, they can move ahead 10 spaces. So if I'm at 20, hopefully I can recognize patterns in this 100 charts and just move down a row to 30. Students can, again, record their addition equations on the chart, change their name, and just have some fun with that. So this is just a quick and easy way to gamify your class. So you can start with a blank sheet. You might want to go to your desktop, take a picture. So I have a game I want to include on my desktop. All I need to do is go to that PDF, open it up. Here's one on fraction rolls. And what I'll do is I'll zoom out so that I can get the entire screen and then just take a screenshot of it. This is a rolling cover to reinforce benchmark fractions. Go back to my um, slide deck and then click on insert. This time I'm going to insert an image. Remember for my PDF, you can't upload a PDF to a Google slide deck. Trust me, I've already learned that. And then I'm going to insert this picture that I just uh, took a picture of from my computer. It's a screenshot. Once that's up and ready, can stretch it out. I've already added some of the pieces um, that I want to include. I can include this table, so I'll just copy it and paste it Oops. and include that as well. Or what I can also do is I can just make a copy of this slide. I can duplicate this slide and there it is. And then I can just change the game board with my fraction cover-up. All right, you guys. Well, I hope you had fun watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave in the comments what you'd like to see more. Take care and see you next time.